How we doing, everybody, and welcome to Wisconsin Sports on the Go with Trage. I'm your host, Trage. We're here. It's Friday. It's a great Friday, a fantastic Friday. We made it, folks. We made it to the weekend. That's what we hope for, right? Every week. Every week is just make it to the weekend. Work until the weekend, right? That's what they say. So, fantastic week. We had a lot to talk about all week long, a lot about the Badgers and, well, Greg Gard and what's going wrong and everything like that. Today we're going to talk about the Badgers, but that's because they have a matchup with Illinois coming up this weekend. We're going to talk about that, also some of the things that the Badgers have to get better at here down the stretch for them to, well, let's just say do better than what they did in February, which was a 2-6 and six February there, so not impressive at all. Also today we got to talk about the Brewers. Brewers. Lost another one in spring training. We got to talk about that game, and we're going to see where the day takes us today. So right away, jumping to the Brewers. Brewers did lose this spring training game here, 7-5, to five, to the Rangers. I wish we could talk about a win. Can't find one. Seems like can't find one as of late here. So Brewers do drop this game 7-5. to five. Looking at the lineup here, a lot of rookies. A lot of rookies in there for the Brewers in this one. Top of the lineup, Sal Frelick and... Jackson Churro, both of them 0 for 4 on the night here, or on the day here. And Tyler Black was also at the top of the lineup for the Brewers. He went 1 for 4 in this game. Joey Weimer, bad in the cleanup spot, did go 1 for 4 in this one. So fantastic news right there to hear Joey Weimer getting in the lineup and getting a hit there. So great news. Bryce Terang, 2 for 3 on the day. He had two runs scored in this one. Gotta love it. Gotta love Bryce Terang hitting the baseball. That's what we've been waiting for. This guy's got the glove, right? He's got the glove. He's got the arm. He's got the range. He's got everything defensively. Offensive side. What can he bring us? Hopefully more of this because this was fantastic two for three day. Joey Ortiz, recent uh, Brewers recently got him from the Orioles here. Played shortstop, started at short, one for three, but had a big two-run shot there for the Brewers. Oliver Dunn played third base for the Brewers. He went two for three in this game. Eric Hayes was two for two. Catcher there for the Brewers. Had a good day. And Brock Wilkin, this guy is smoking right now. 714 batting average here to start his spring debut for the Brewers. And he went another great day. Two for three at the plate. He did have an RBI in this one. Brock Wilkins, his stock is only rising. This is a young guy who I don't, he's not going to break camp with the team. But, I mean, he's hitting the baseball. And he's going to keep climbing through the minors until the Brewers finally say, ah, maybe we'll give him a shot here pretty soon at the uh, major league level. So it's definitely great to see these young guys stepping up for the Brewers. On the flip side of it, for the Rangers in this one, a lot of one-hit performance in this one. Walsh had a hit for the Rangers. Duran had a hit. Uh, Kisner had a hit for them. Smith was one for two on the game here. Matt Duffy had a hit. Lots of hits all the way around for this Rangers team. They were out hit by the Brewers, 11-8 in this game here, though. Looking at the pitching side, Joe Ross did give up a run. Pitched two innings, though, for the Brewers. Gave up one run on one hit, two strikeouts. So you take your good with your bad, right? He pitched two innings, gave up one earned run, only on a hit, though, and two strikeouts. Not a bad outing out of Joe Ross. Definitely not fantastic. Not not over-the-top fantastic, but definitely not bad at all. So great great to see Joe Ross stepping in there and handling it. Uh, Paguero? I talked about him yesterday. He was day-to-day there. He did pitch in this one. He had an inning pitch, two hits, one earned run in his little outing there. Abner Uribe, rough outing in his first one, gave up three runs. In this one, one uh, one inning pitched, one hit, and one strikeout. So solid right there out of Abner Uribe. Other notables, the main one I'm looking at is Tyler Wosner. Did get in for an inning, and he gave up. He had two strikeouts in that inning of work. So solid work there. Out of Tyler Wosner. Nathan Avaldi did start for the Rangers. Three innings pitch there, two hits, one earned run, and five strikeouts. It seems like, you know, when I look at a lot of other opposing teams right now, their starters, two innings, three innings apiece. We're watching guys so far for the Brewers, a lot of one inning performances out of these starts. I don't know. We saw the first one here with Joe Ross stepping it up a little bit there. Maybe we'll see when the normal starters get in there, we'll see a little bit more inning work out of those guys. But so far for the Brewers, a lot of one inning performances. So definitely is an interesting, uh, interesting take right there on this Brewers team. But like I said, Brewers dropped this one to the Rangers seven to five. 
Hopefully, we're going to bounce back here pretty soon. We got to win a game, right? It's spring. We got to win a game eventually. The Brewers will be in action. They will be taking on the Padres again. Just face the Padres. They're going to face the Padres again now at American Family Fields of Phoenix. That'll be today here, happening at 210. And I believe the pitching matchup for that one will be Bryce Wilson will be facing irate. Irate? I don't know. Names, right? We try to say names. We're not good at names. But Bryce Wilson will start for the Brewers in this one. Pitched well in his first outing for the Brewers. Hopefully we see another good start here out of Bryce Wilson heading into this one. And for this weekend, the Brewers will be in action this weekend also. They will be taking on the Dodgers come Saturday here. Jansen Junk will get the start for the Brewers against the Dodgers on Saturday. And then on Sunday, it looks like Freddie Peralta will make his spring training debut going up against the Arizona Diamondbacks on Sunday there. So that should be fantastic baseball for the weekend. Hopefully they get Freddie Peralta a win over the weekend there. Uh, it started out right. The ace of the staff, going to start opening day. Get him, a, get him a win in his opening day of spring training start, right? Fantastic. That would be fantastic right there. But that's what I got there right now. Brewer's schedule coming up here. I was just thinking, you know, any concerns? I, I, I've heard a lot of people talking about concerns with this Brewers team so far. The only concern I have is uh, bullpen depth and pitching depth kind of being tested right now. We're seeing, you know, when we look at these games right now, we're seeing a lot of the young guys get exposed. A lot of the not so much your like Gasser and Mizorowski kind of types, but the fill in guys, the guys that would possibly get that shot at the major league level are kind of getting roughed up here to start the spring. So all I would say is pitching depth is about the only concern I have so far. Other than that, I mean, we're seeing a lot of rookies. It's early. It's spring training. I mean, not really anything crazy happening as of right now. We haven't seen the likes of Yelich and Hoskins yet. They're expected to play this weekend. I would expect to at least see them on Sunday with Freddie. I would expect more of a major league look on Sunday there when they face the Diamondbacks, just to see kind of who's going to be out there. I would expect, I, I'm expecting to see like Willie, Hoskins, Yelich, uh, Sal will probably play in that game. Some of the mainstay guys will be in there on Sunday. Kind of what I expect there. But other than that, not many concerns out of the Brewers right now. It's spring. I mean, it's spring training. Nothing really to harp on in any way, shape, or form. As of right now, standouts in spring, like I said before, Brock Wilkin. Playing, he's hot right now. Started out hot. He's staying hot for the Brewers. That's been great to see. Sal Frelick at third base. You know, I thought maybe there might be a little bit of a transition to get him going there. Hasn't played bad so far. So I like what I've seen out of Sal there at third. Bryce Durang's impressing right now. Uh, not to start, but as of late, last couple games, he's been hitting the baseball better. And that's what we wanted to see out of Sal. Joey Weimer. He had a hit today or yesterday there, but other than that, I mean, he's been all for it. So that's a guy that is a concern for me right now. Is he going to be able to find that bat? Garrett Mitchell would be along that same route for me right now, but you know, it's early. It's spring. You can't really harp on guys as much and you can't really, you can't read into it too far yet. I mean, once we get a ways into spring, okay, but this is early. This is early right now, so we'll see. We'll check in in a week here, and then we'll be able to discuss that further. But with that, that's about all I got. That is about all I have for the Brewers and the spring training schedule. I just wanted to mention the Bucks will be in action again coming up this weekend here. They will be taking on the Chicago Bulls. And the Bulls coming in this one, 28-31. Not playing their best basketball, but this is still a solid team right now. Bulls recently beat the Cavs there in double overtime. So this team's been winning as of late. They did lose a game to the Pistons before that. But this is a solid Bulls team, a team that has beaten the Bucs this year. I believe that was back in like November that they beat the Bucs in overtime. Yep, yeah, it was in November there. Otherwise, the Bucs have had their number. Close games, though. So I expect another close one over the weekend here, but the way the Bucks defense has been playing, I, I'm optimistic about this game against the Bulls. This is a game that they should have, and that's about it. That's about all I got to say on that matchup there. So Bucks bulls coming up there. That'll be on Saturday, I believe, there. Or no, that'll be on tonight. That'll be tonight here, 9 o'clock start or 9 o'clock tip 
for that game. Another nine o'clock tip. That's why I was confused. I thought it was Saturday. Now I look at it. It is tonight. It's a nine o'clock tip for this game. I hate when they put games at nine o'clock for just for an ESPN slot. I don't care if it was on Bally Sports. Just put the game at a normal time. It might be in Chicago, but it's still central time. This is still a really late game. Whatever. Whatever. So Bucks Bulls coming up nine o'clock tonight here from Chicago for that game there. But with that, before we move on here, I just wanted to talk about a couple of our sponsors here. First, your hometown team, Century 21 Gold Key Realty. Call Peggy Sewer Anna to find your dream home or if you're looking to sell. Find them on Facebook at your hometown team, Century 21 Gold Key Realty, or stop in and see them at their location in Marshfield. Also, sports scenes, sports cards, and memorabilia. Stop in there in the Marshfield Mall and see Al. He will help you get all your sporting cards, memorabilia, jerseys, everything you could possibly need sporting-wise. He's got it there at the store. Also, Pittsville Farm and Home Center. At the store, they serve you anything from hydraulic hoses to red roses. Stop in and see the awesome crew at Pittsville Farm and Home Center in Pittsville. But with that, moving out of the box, moving out of the Brewers, I want to get into the Badgers. We've talked about the Badgers all week, right? And I've expressed all my hate and concern and everything in between about this Badger team. Today, I want to talk about the Badgers versus Illinois. And then I want to talk about what this Badger team needs to do to get right. Because they are far from right right now. So we have to talk about it. So right away, I want to look at some of the things you got to know before this Badger-Illinois matchup, okay? First off, they will be honoring Howard Moore at this game on Saturday there. So just so everybody knows, if you are heading to the game there, they will they will be honoring Howard Moore at this game. A lot of former teammates will be in attendance for this one. Fans, if you are going to the game, get there as early as about 11.45 a.m. for the pregame there. It starts, the game starts at noon, but get there at 11.45 so you can be a part of this. Uh, Tragic, it was tragic what happened to Howard Moore and his family there, and all prayers to him that they are getting better and everything like that. But this is, I, I mean, it's great to see. It is great to see the Badgers honoring Howard Moore and his family at the Kohl Center here on Saturday. So before I start anymore, I just wanted to mention that there. But this is a matchup between the Badgers that the Badgers have to have. You got three games left. Illinois, Rutgers, and Purdue. That game at West Lafayette is going to be a tough one. And not many people win at Mackey. You got to win this game. It's going to be tough to beat Purdue at Purdue. You couldn't beat Purdue in Madison. So going on the road is going to be a gauntlet. You got to be able to handle this game. You got to be able to somehow pull this one out. I don't know how. We're going to talk about different ways that we believe the Badgers can fix this. But you got to find a way to rally the troops in this one. Somebody's got to step up. Somebody's got to take care of business in this one. Because you just lost the game to Indiana. You have struggled as of late. You got to find a win here in this game. The series history between these two teams, this is the 207th time the Badgers will face Illinois, dating back all the way to 1906. The Fighting Illini actually lead the all-time series 116-90, to but the Badgers hold the edge when playing in Madison, 59-42, to 59 and 42, when they are in Madison there. So a little bit of home cooking for the Badgers. They play a little bit better at home. Maybe that'll help in this game here. The Badgers are looking to snap a, actually a six-game losing streak against Illinois with the two. Um, they, they only are meeting this one time this season. So that's the interesting part here. It dialed in late in the season there. The Badgers would face the likes of Illinois one more time. But this is definitely going to have to be a good one for Wisconsin. You got to win this game here. In the last two games against Illinois last season, Chucky Hepburn had 18.5 points. 3.3 rebounds and 3.3 assists per game. So Chucky Upburn was that guy against Illinois. Can he do it again? That's going to be a question mark. Max Klesman scored double figures in both meetings last year, averaging 11.5 and 6 rebounds. Steven Crowell also posted a 20.12 rebound performance at Illinois last year. 
Is it signs for things to come? I don't know. I don't know right there. So Illinois coming into this game, ranked number 13 in the top 25 right now. They are 21-7, and seven, and they are actually 12-5 and five in Big Ten play. In second place, right behind Purdue there, who is in the front spot there. Uh, Illinois has the second best offensive efficiency in the conference right now. They're averaging about 84.5 points per game. The defense for Illinois is holding opponents to an average of 72. Point nine points per game right now so teams are putting up buckets on Illinois it's not like they're playing fantastic defense but they are playing good enough to get the job done as of late as we've seen they're 21 and 7 they're 12 and 5 72 points per game they're giving up but they are so they also are scoring 84 points per game themselves so definitely a you have to play good defense against this team you got to get stops you got to control this team control the fast break is going to be a big thing here Terrence Shannon Jr. leads the way for Illinois, averaging about 21.9 points per game, 4.4 rebounds per game. Marcus Damask is actually averaging 15.5 points, and Coleman Hawkins is averaging 13.3 uh, on the year right now. You got to control these guys. Terrence Shannon's going to be the big one in this game. Coleman Hawkins might beat you. Damask might beat you. You got to pick and choose, right? You can't shut. It's hard to shut down an entire team. You got to shut down pick and roll actions. You got to keep Terrence Shannon out of the lane, and you got to control the three point arc in this game. Otherwise, it's going to get away fast. So, this is going to be a game where the Badgers definitely have to step up defensively and show us something here heading into this one. The Badgers, they actually have been at their best when they're playing at the Cole Center this year. They are 13 and 2 at the Cole Center. Both games, they lost two number, they lost to number two, Purdue at the time, and then number nine, Tennessee. So two great teams came into the goal center there and beat the Badgers. Both games were close. That uh, Tennessee game was 80-70. to Purdue was a six-point loss or something like that right around. I don't have it right up in front of me here. But both games were close there. At the Cole Center this season, the Badgers are actually averaging 78.2 points per game, and they are shooting 50% from the field. So they have been impressive this season shooting the basketball at home. They got to continue that in this game here. UW is actually 359 and 69 all time at the Kohl Center, the 11th best active venue record in the country. That's crazy if you ask me. This Wisconsin team, I mean, historically knows how to win at home. So how do you bounce back in this game and beat a very good Illinois team on your home court? That's what the Badgers have to answer in this game here. So Badgers, Illinois, I mean, right now, you look at ESPN, you look at a lot of the betting, and Wisconsin's actually favored in this game against Illinois. That's kind of surprising. Not by a wide margin, 51% to 48%. So nothing crazy percentage-wise there, but Badgers are favored here. Badgers' leading scorer heading into this game is A.J. Storr. You got to have a big game if you're A.J. Storr in this one. You are the Badgers. It sucks to say, but you are that guy that can be a difference maker for this team. AJ Storr has got to have another big game for the Badgers. Don't force anything. That's the big thing that I hate with this Badger team is how much they force shots at times. Find the open look, run the offense, find the open look, let the offense flow. That's when this team's at their best. So AJ Storr has got to have a big game here. Another guy for me, Stephen Crowell. I got to see Stephen Crowell have a big game here. He is the key to the Badgers. He is. He holds the keys to the success of the Badgers and the downfall of the Badgers. If Crowell cannot get it open, if he can't get open, if he can't score it in the post, this entire team changes. The demeanor of this team changes. And when shots aren't falling from the arc and Stephen Crowell can't produce on the inside, they, that spells trouble. This team struggles. And that's where, I mean, it's got to be Stephen Crawl. It's got to be the bigs for the Badgers. You can only ask so much out of Tyler Wall. You can only ask so much out of Chucky Epburn and A.J. Storr. It's got to be, and it's crazy, a team effort in this game here. You got to step up if you are Stephen Crawl. And another guy, Max Klesman. I'm sorry, but Max, you th- this team was rolling when Max was rolling. And then Max went cold. He went ice cold. It's not like there was this little dive where it slowly tapered off. 
he went ice cold and he went ice cold fast. And that spelled trouble. We were riding his coattail. And then all of a sudden he started struggling. The Badgers started struggling. We need to see some max magic in this game. I'm not talking about the crazy crap that we saw early on in the year, like that game against Marquette, where everything was falling there late in that or in that first half there. Not like it was in, I believe it was right after that, the game after that against Ohio State. The first half or second half just went off. Crazy amount of points, or it might have been right before it. I mean, Max Klesman was rolling, and then he just died. He fell off a cliff. We got to see Max come back in this game. We got, I mean, this this is a very good Illinois team. And in order for the Badgers to win this game, you have to have big games out of your star players, out of your big dogs. And that's your big dogs. I mean, that is, truth be told. You have Tyler Wall and Chucky, but they can't carry this team. They can't. Tyler Wall's not going to be able to carry his team on his own. You got to have outside shooting. You got to have a big... Steven Crowell needs to play the post and just play the post and stay in the post. I He's a seven-footer who spends most of his time out on the perimeter. That takes away the game from Steven Crowell. Let him eat in the post. Work the inside outlooks. Work it through the offense. That will benefit this team in the end there. So... Definitely got to see big games out of Steven Crowell and Max Klesman in this one. But all the way around, I got to see a team collective effort on the defensive end in this game here. The Badgers have to play well defensively in this game against Illinois. Otherwise, it will get ugly. It will get ugly, and it will get ugly fast. And we don't want to see that. We don't want to see another game like that because we can only put up with so much We can, and this, you can't really call it a losing streak, but a struggle, a losing streak with a struggle streak tucked in between there because they struggled in wins against Maryland and they struggled in that win against Ohio State. So I'm not going to say that they have been on this losing streak the entire time. They won two games tucked in there, but it feels like it hasn't been right in a month. This team hasn't been the same in a month. It doesn't. I, I I take those two wins that the Badgers had, and yeah, they snuck them out, but they were home games. You sneak out road games in the Big Ten. When you go on the road and you win, you're sneaking a win. When you're at home and you win, it majority of the time you got to win those games big. I mean, those were two bad teams. Ohio State fired their head coach right after the game, and Maryland is a dumpster fire. You know, you can handle the losses on the road a little bit better. But the ones at home, you got to be able to hang your hat and say, "I we played our best basketball in that game at home. And the Badgers haven't played their best basketball in a month. That's just truth be told. So this is a game, new month, new attitude. Got to start it out right. This is an Illinois team that if the Badgers want to advance in the Big Ten tournament, they might have to face in that Big Ten tournament, and you're going to have to win. You're going to have to play well on a neutral floor. Can the Badgers win on their home floor? That's the question. We're going to see it. We're going to see it come Sunday or Saturday there. Should be a good matchup there for the Badgers. That'll be coming up there at noon on Saturday, a kind of weird tip time at high noon, but okay, okay. High noon for the tip-off of this one on the Big Ten Network, Illinois and Wisconsin, coming to you from the Kohl Center. But with that, before I move on here, talking a little bit more about the Badgers, I just wanted to mention a couple more of our sponsors here. First, Game Day Supply in on Alaska. Do you have a sports club or team? Are you looking for some sweet custom uniforms or apparel? Check out the awesome crew at Game Day Supply to help your team get the sweetest gear. Check them out on Facebook at Game Day Supply or online at gamedaysupply.net. Also, Sport and Spine Clinic in Greenwood. If you need physical therapy, if you were recently injured at work, on the field, wherever it was, stop in there in Greenwood, Wisconsin. Talk to Chad at Sport and Spine Clinic. He will get you right. He will get you back to work, back on the field, and feeling better than ever. So Sport and Spine Clinic 
in Greenwood there. But with that, I'm going to stick with the Badgers. I was, I, I've pondered on it the past couple days, right? And we've talked, and we've talked about this Badger team and mainly Greg Gard, okay? And I've had enough talk about Greg Gard. Either the Badgers are going to fire him or they're going to keep him, whatever. But there are things that I'm watching with this Badger team that they have to do better or that they're struggling with that need to be figured out if this team is going to get better come March here, come tournament time, Big Ten tournament, and then the national tournament there. So first thing I'm looking at, looking at this Badger team has to get back to running a set offense. Truth be told, there are times in the game with this Badger team that I couldn't, even if I sat there, and I had one of those TVs where I could draw everything that's happening on the TV. I could draw the play as it happened. I could draw it. I don't think I could, to be honest with you. Because there are times where the Badgers don't even look like they are running a set offense. And that worries me. Because then you get to the point where, yes, to my next point there, you want to let this team loose. You want to, to let this team be who they are. But you have to take that to an extent. I want to let A.J. Store be the athletic, dynamite player that he is. But I also want him to work within an offense to become that player. I like that he can take the offense and change the dynamic of it. He can add that athleticism, that speed, the ability to get to the rim. I like that ability that he has, but he takes it out of context at times. There are times where... You have to go fast. You have to work through the offense fast. I get that. But what I see so often with this Badger team right now is it's like they're trying to play different play styles throughout a game. You know, at one point, we're working slow and methodical. And it's, let's just say the Badgers are up by two. We're working slow and methodical. Next time down, it's like, the script just completely flipped. We're down by 15. Now we have to score really fast. So now we're boom, 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 bad shot. Now we're going the other way. That's that's where I'm, I, I'm not worried. If the Badgers play the game, and you can go at different tempos. I'm not saying you can't. But they have to find a play style that works for this team. I haven't seen a play style that has worked and stuck with this team so far. You remember Bo Ryan's offense, right? Everybody loves to compare Greg Gard to Bo Ryan. So let's compare them. You look at offensive styles. Bo Ryan's offenses were never quick. Yeah, they did. When there was a fast break opportunity, they took the fast break opportunity. But they never, the offense was the same. When they came down, it was a set play. They were running the swing offense, right? The the old glory of Wisconsin there with uh, Bo Ryan, the swing offense. It changed when better playmakers came into Madison, like Frank Kaminsky and Sam Decker. Then they got to more set plays. But before that, it was a little bit more swing offense, a little bit more functional. This Badger team right now, I don't understand why they run set plays. And I look at this team. Yes, A.J. Storr is athletic. Yes, he can create a shot. No, he can't hit all those shots. Max Klesman, yes, he can hit shots. Does he hit them all? No. So nobody on this team is that killer, right? And that's another point. Nobody on this team is a killer. Nobody is going to get after it and become a leader of this team and step up in the biggest moments and be able to hit every shot that you want them to. So at that point, you got to run an offense that's going to allow guys to get open. Go back to the swing offense. Getting mismatches. You can create mismatches with this offense, and all these guys can score around the rim. I'm not saying that I'm not saying that they are bad from the three-point line. I'm saying that they're inconsistent from the three-point line. These guys can all hit the three outside of Tyler Wall. They can all hit the three. But when we try to play different play styles, Tyler Wall is not a quick, he's not meant to play in a faster-paced offense. Stephen Crowell is not meant to play in a faster-paced offense. 
So when you force those guys into playing a different style, it takes away their game. When they slow it down, Tyler Wall, so, if you watch him in the post, it's masterful, but it's not quick. It's slow. He's going to size up his defender. He's going to utilize his ground strength, be able to explode up, be able to utilize the uh, spin move, anything like that. He's going to back a guy down and work to his spot on the court. But if you start playing this quick offense, now Tyler Wall has to speed up his offense, takes away what Tyler Wall can do, including Stephen Crowell. When you try to speed up Crowell, bad things happen. I got to say, even a guy like A.J. Storr at times, when you speed him up too much, he takes a lot of bad shots. That ruins this team. Chucky Hepburn, at times, yes, he can work a little bit faster, but when Chucky's at his best is when he gets the ability to back down a defender or work his way to the basket. Max Klesman, same thing, but Max is better when it's slow into the post. They utilize that post to slow back down, try and grab a double. If they get a double down, now Max is the catch-and-shoot kind of guy. This Badger team works best under slow conditions. Some people have a problem with that. I don't. You got to do what your team can succeed at. And this Badger team, early on this year, yeah, it seemed like they could score at a higher offensive clip. Right now, it's about getting quality shots per possession. They're putting up a lot of shots. I mean, this last game, they had 22 more shots than what uh, Indiana put up in that game. Yet, Indiana shot 61% from the field compared to the Badgers shooting like 40% from the field. But the difference was is Indiana shots were quality shots versus Wisconsin shots, not so quality. They were putting up a lot of shots, but not hitting a lot of shots. Putting up good shots is going to be a key for the Badgers here down the stretch there. So I just wanted to mention those few things there. Defensively, the Badgers are bad in the pick and roll. I, I don't know how you fix it defensively right now. But they are atrocious when it comes to the pick and roll at this moment. And you can fix stuff like that. Now, you can either have guys chase around the top of a screen. You can have them dive underneath. You have to have better communication between guys out there. If they're going to help, if they're going to sag, what's going to happen between the two right now. But right now, the handoff of guards versus bigs is terrible for the Badgers. So that's another thing I keyed in on when I was looking at this Badger team as a whole. Defensively, they are struggling right now. And... I saw a lot of people talking. Would a zone work for Wisconsin? I just don't. It's hard to run a zone, especially because it seems like a lot of teams are banging threes against Wisconsin. So you get yourself into a zone set. Unless if you run maybe like an extended 2-3 zone, but now you're opening up the middle of the lane there for something quick, teams are going to expose that. Now, do you go to, do you flip? Do you flip in between? I could see that working. I could really see that working where you flip in between. Maybe you run a zone. And then all of a sudden you flip out of that zone and now you're in a man. I would, if I was Wisconsin, if Chucky Epburn's going to be pestering the ball anyways, I would pick them up full court. I would start doing that number again. They did that early on this year where they were playing that little bit of full court action there. The Badgers were. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Wisconsin pick up guys in the full court again and kind of slow them down, coming across, give them less time on the shot clock when they get down there, while also getting yourself, giving guys time to get set there on the defensive end. Also, it's going to change the game. It's going to change what other teams want to do. So maybe you throw some kind of full court look at them at times there and try to slow other teams down there. Another thing I key in on for the Badgers, turnovers. It's one thing if you play fast all the time and you have turnovers because then it's not as big of a worry. You know, you're hitting shots, but you're turning the basketball over at inopportune times. That's different. This Badger team's playing a style right now where they're in between and they're still turning the basketball over. That's where it runs into an issue right now. So turnovers definitely have to be cleaned up by the Badgers here moving forward. I mean... We've seen a couple games where it's been the Badgers 
were forced into bad spots, but a lot of the bigs turning the basketball over for Wisconsin. Stephen Crowell and Tyler Wall, I can't remember if it was. It was against Indiana. I believe it was against Maryland. They had five turnovers combined or more than that combined. That's something they have to watch there if you are Wisconsin. Not a fan of the bigs turning the basketball over there. That's bad passing. That's being out of control. That's, you know, early on in the year, Tyler Wall had a couple of turnover issues in a couple of games. A lot of it was because Badgers were trying to play too fast for Tyler Wall. So I don't know. You got to find the happy medium for those guys there. Limit the turnovers here moving forward. Also, you got to get to the free throw line. Two for three in the game against Indiana. That's bad. This is a team that, if, like I said before, if you want to compare this team to Bo Ryan's teams, that team, Bo Ryan's teams got to the free throw line. They rebounded, they out rebounded teams, got to the free throw line, and when they got there, they converted. They were sound teams, limited turnovers too. And right now, we're seeing the opposite with Wisconsin. We're seeing high turnovers, lack of free throws, and rebounding is an issue at times. They are controlling most games rebound wise. But a lot of offensive rebounds at inopportune times for the Badgers. So definitely something they have to clean up there. They got to get to the line. You got to attack the rim. You have to attack the rim with a purpose. Don't be soft going in there. Have confidence. Another thing for the Badgers, confidence. Got to have confidence when driving to the rack. Get fouled. Finish around the rim. Whatever it has to be. Earn your way to the charity stripe and make things happen. That's going to be huge for the Badgers here moving forward. The free throw line. This team shoots it well from the free throw line on the season. They're not, they are one of the better teams in the Big Ten when it comes to shooting free throws. If you look at their percentage against Indiana's, Indiana's terrible shooting the free throw. And the Badgers got there three times against Indiana. So definitely something that has to be fixed, especially against a good Illinois team. You have to get them into foul trouble and work your way to the free throw line. Stop settling for shots. That's another thing I wanted to key in on. The shot might look open, but there's a reason why it's open. If you are 0 for the century on the game, there's a reason why they're leaving you open. If there's a better look, if there's a way you can step in five feet and shoot a jump shot, take the opportunity. Give yourself a shot because right now this team is settling when they do have open lanes, when they do have open guys in the post area or uh, cutting lanes. They are just settling, and I hate that. I hate when teams settle for threes just because it's open. Okay, it's open. But as of late, there's a reason why they're leaving you open. So Badgers definitely got to be better there. Stop settling for shots there. Steven Crowell, like I talked about before earlier there, he's got to be big. He's got to be big. And when I say big, he's got to play like he's a seven-footer. Don't play like you're a six-six guy going in the post against Zach Eady every single time. You're a seven-foot guy with 225 pounds on you. Make it happen in the post. Stop playing like you're soft. I mean, in the nicest way possible, grow a pair. Get after it and get some buckets because this Badger team relies on you just as much as they rely on anybody else to get things done. When you play good, everybody plays good. Steven Crowell's got to play big for the Badgers down the stretch here. Also, Chucky Efford. We've seen better games as of late here, but now we're seeing what this team can do with Chucky Hepburn. Now Stephen Crowell comes along to the party. Now you got a full you have, you got the batter mixed. Now we can make the cake, right? We got the batter brewing in there. We got Chucky at times. We got Crowell at times. Let's make a cake now. Let's make a cake. And then when a season starts to hit shots off the bench, that's just frosting, baby. That's just frosting across the top there. And that's what we need to see. So got to see big play out of Chucky Hepburn here. The rest of the way. A couple of things just ended here, and they feed off each other is confidence is key for this team. And I don't know if Nebraska broke this team, but it sure seems like it. Because after that 19-point lead that they had at Nebraska, they blew that game. This team just changed. Everything changed. Shooting changed. Defense changed. Everything just changed. The whole demeanor of this team changed. At one point, they were flowing. They were clicking on all cylinders. It was like boom, boom, boom. And then all of a sudden, the second half of Nebraska kicked in, and this team just fell apart. So I don't know what it's going to take to get the confidence back in this team, but they have to find it. They have to find confidence moving forward here. That comes from coaching. The coaches have to get this team's confidence back. 
because right now they are struggling. They are down in the dumps. They are out of it. They're trying to find a way, and they got to rally. And it starts from the top down. The coaching staff gives it down to the rest of these guys. Right away, you got to walk into that locker room. If you are Greg Gard, Joe Krabinoff, whoever it is, you got to walk in that locker room and just demand that these guys get ready to rock. They get ready, and they are ready and fired up. That's what you have to do. You have to get this team ready. I mean, everybody's been there, right? If you played sports, if you didn't play sports, you went through the years where you were down in the dumps. You didn't know what to do next. Everything seemed like it was falling apart. You have Sometimes you got to have that one guy, your leader, walk into that room and say, hey, we're fine. We're fine. Yeah, we sucked. We sucked in the month of February, but we can figure it out. That's what the Badgers need right now, a leader. I don't know if it needs to be from the players. I don't know if Tyler Wall, Chucky Eppern, somebody's got to step up, be that leader, because right now I don't think the Badgers have a leader. It's got to come from a player too, because I don't see leadership on the court, but it's got to start at the top. Greg Gard has to lead this team. He has to, I mean, walk into that locker room and say, guys, we've sucked, but we can do it. These are the things we got to do better. We have to play better. We have to hustle. We have to get after the boards. We got to do the little things better because then the big things don't seem so hard to reach for. Right now, this team is rushing things. They're trying to figure it out all at once. They go down two points and they feel like it's 10. They feel like they have to get those, they have to get three to take the lead. They don't have the confidence in themselves to be able to come back from even the simplest of games. What's it going to take? That's the question. That's the question I want to leave with is what is it going to take for the Badgers to get right? We're going to find out this weekend here against Illinois. What can the Badgers show us moving forward that's going to give us confidence heading into the rest of this Big Ten schedule, into the Big Ten tournament, and into the national tournament? What can this Badger team do yet to surprise us? We've seen the highs. We've seen the lows. I don't believe they were as good as what they were playing as. I don't believe they were the number six team in college basketball, but I don't believe they're far out of the top 15, top 20. I don't think so. I really don't. I will give you 15 teams that are better than Wisconsin or that Wisconsin I don't believe could beat daily, but I can give you a boatload of teams that I believe the Badgers realistically could beat day in and day out. And this team right now, they got to find that happy medium. They have to find the middle ground right now, and everything will be fine. They'll figure it out, and the confidence will come back. The shooting will come back, and everything will be great again. But like I said, got to start this weekend here. 12 o'clock tip for that game from the Cole Center on Saturday. Bucks will be in action tonight here, coming up 9 o'clock against the Bulls. Other than that, Wisconsin softball is in action over the weekend here. They will be in Utah, Utah Tech. Taking on Utah Tech and Utah once again there. Other than that, lots of college basketball, lots of stuff going on this weekend. So if you are just chilling out on the couch this weekend, just tune in to ESPN, Big Ten Network, and check out all the great games coming up. But with that, this has been Wisconsin Sports on the Go with Trace. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys back here on Monday, hopefully talking about a Badgers win. But until then, Deuces!